G'day fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the north side of the map, playing in the color red as the Rus, representing Clan 3D, it is B. And on the south side of the map, playing in the color teal as the Holy Roman Empire, it's Beastie Cutie. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Basin. We're here casting once again EGC TV's Golden League. As always, you can catch Golden League every Saturday and Sunday at 15 GMT, 10 a.m. Eastern and 2 a.m. Australian time, Saturday and Sunday. We've just finished stage number one, but stage number two is quickly coming up this weekend. So make sure you check it out. I'll leave the link in the description to where you can catch it. And let's get into the action. So we got ourselves a good matchup here. Holy Roman Empire against the Rus. A matchup that is typically focused heavily around relics, but that's not always going to be the bank it and the break it. Uh, Holy Roman Empire wants to try and get to as many relics as possible, and the Rus, they want to do the same. Uh, both have got tools to look to pick up relics quickly, quicker than other civilizations. Of course, the Holy Roman Empire, you'll be familiar with their prelates, able to get out on the map in the second age. And as soon as age three comes in, boom, click, click those relics and bring them back towards the town center immediately. Whereas the Rus, a civilization that ages up, they don't have to make a monastery. They've already got one. They've already got a monastery in the form of their Abbey of the Trinity. So they put that bad boy down. And of course, they've got faster monks as well. That's another thing to remember, that their warrior monks are much faster than a normal monk. So it means that they're able to run out onto the map and deny these relics in the center of the map. So that's what a lot of this game is going to be about. It's going to be focused heavily around those relics. And it might not look like it at certain points, but I assure you it is. There'll be fights that'll be happening and it'll all be about whether you can find yourself a window to get up to that next stage to try and get those relics in. Because denying them from the Holy Roman Empire is very, very important for B to do. And collecting them as the Holy Roman Empire as Beastie is very, very important to do. We'll take a look over at Beastie's base, though. Let's see how he's doing. And let's talk about this Arkan, because I suspect he's going to be going into the Arkan. He's got a great spot to put this Arkan down right here. Let's see if he goes for it. This uh, uh, Right around here, I think, is probably the best spot. Let's see whether that's his plan. It looks like it. There we go. Uh, so it goes down straight away. So he's going to be able to pick up the stone. He's able to pick up the gold, picks up the DC, and, of course, picks up the wood. And he picks up, picks up a very good chunk of the wood. Uh, and now I'm going to be moving on to Straggler Trees. Very nice positioning so far. Uh, and one thing to note is Beastie's only gone with a one scout opening. And, like, he's walking past wolves actively. He, he scouted out his deer. He just left the deer. Uh, he is going after sheep here. And I think this is kind of interesting, right? And I've actually been doing the same thing in my games against Rus. And even in the coaching that I do, I tell people, look, if you're playing against the Rus on the ladder, don't make a second scout. Don't even bother killing the deer. Just go and get your sheep. That's all you want to do. That's all you need to do because your game plan is based on that. Let's just let them get their bounty. And obviously you want to try and deny it, but the reality is investing in those extra scouts, that's not part of your build order. You don't have a build order planned on Boulder Bay against the Rus. You have a, 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 a build order on Boulder Bay and that's it, you know? Like we don't have the ability. Obviously in this position, this is a great opportunity for Be Beastie to, to potentially deny out some of these deer here. Uh, but uh, B's going to have him on it at least for the, uh, the, the early stage. He did pick up one over here. And now I think at this point, B's just going to be waiting for his... Uh, second scout to be making his way up here and then he's going to be able to one shot it beastie knows that and subsequently just leaves him to pick up the rest of those deer now let's take a look at a landmark that we have got coming down right here we've got the kremlin ladies and gentlemen now the kremlin has actually been changed one of the things that we didn't cover in any of the videos at all was that between the bait or not the beta but the pup for age of empires 4 for season 4 and release the developers made a number of different changes and I, I didn't see them. I, I didn't get the heads up about it at all. And I just kind of went into season four. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why is this Kremlin like working differently? So the way the Kremlin works now, and I know I've covered this before in one of the videos, but I'll, I'll just reiterate again for you. It works on a ticket system, the same way the Golden Gate does. You'll be familiar with the Golden Gate. The way that it works is you've got tickets. You can spend those tickets. You take some gold and you turn it into food, or you take some food and you turn it into gold, right? Like, you've got tickets, and you can do that once every minute. It's the same with the Kremlin. The only thing is you're taking food and you're turning it into militia. The mil militia do not lose health, but they are on a timer. So it means that you can go for, like, a crazy good push, or you can just look to try and use them at different points in the game but you'll start off the game and you'll spawn in and you will have a single ticket down here number of available supplies each supply allows for one trade and it's going to cost you 40 food to do that so each well, militia have 80 seconds of lifespan they can be called every minute so you get a ticket every minute so it's a pretty cool uh mechanic i'm a big fan of this because it means that you can kind of go to castle age just chill out and then you've got 10 tickets built up and all of a sudden you've got 20 militia and you've got an a a really 
uh, valuable anti-cavalry force that you can call upon anytime you need it. So it's a really cool mechanic, and I'm curious to see how B is able to utilize it, utilize it in this game. Now, interestingly, it looks like we're going to have a second town center coming out from B here. We'll ride on board with Beastie. Now, Beastie, his scout is in the area, so I suspect he's probably spotted the stone coming out from his enemy. And Beastie going to be going for a second TC himself. Really cool move here by Beastie going into the second town center. There's a part of me that thinks, why, why the second TC here instead of just going straight to castle? And I, I can't help but feel that the answer is just simply because the pressure that B is going to be able to put out, in even if he goes for two TCs, is too great for you to defend as the Holy Roman Empire, and it means that you're going to be losing out on relics, right? Like, because Beastie could be clicking up very shortly, right? We, we've seen click-ups from the Holy Roman Empire about this time before. On this map, I don't know. I guess it probably comes down to the deer spawn. So where is his deer? We'll take a look. I guess, is, is it out the front? No, it might be towards the side, the, the back. Yeah, okay, it's out towards the back, and there is a couple more deer out here. Um, so, yeah, the, the deer is kind of far away. You know, There's no way you're going to get that under the arc, and obviously you don't get food under the arc. And so prospects of getting up to the Castle That's Age at six minutes are looking pretty low. Uh, but I think it makes sense for him to do that in this position. So it's going to be two TCs up against two TCs. It looks like neither player really looking to commit more than that. And this is what this is what I was talking about, right? Like, so from here, B immediately can put in, in the early night in queue. And he sticks one knight here, one knight here, one knight here, and all of a sudden you can't pick up relics. So I think it's a smart move from Beastie to say, well, if you're going two TC, I'll match you. Uh, and then we'll uh, we'll meet each other in the castle age. We'll dabble a little bit. We'll do a little bit of dancing together. And look at this. Look at B coming out, bringing a villager, looking to wall in the relic that's closest to Beastie's base. You don't see this quite often. People will often allow the Holy Roman Empire just to have a free relic, their closest relic. They kind of just let them say, you know what? You can keep that one. That's on. The, I'll, I'll let you have that one. But the next one's going to cost you. Beastie probably going to be quite upset about that. <laughs> I know I would. I know I would. All right, let's ride on board with B. See how he's doing. See how many knights he's looking to add. He's got one in the queue at the moment. Doesn't look like he's got any out just yet. And just kind of chilling out for the moment. Let's take a look at how the tickets are doing. He's up to three tickets now on the Kremlin. Bit of a weird spot, this Kremlin, honestly. The fact that it's kind of chilling in the back of the base doesn't really do much, does it? Like, he didn't put it at the front. It's not really denying anything or, or you know, securing anything. But look at this. We've got walls on every single relics. Interesting, interesting. All right, Barrack's going to be coming up for Beastie. I guess he's going to be looking at potentially challenging these central relics with Spears himself. So now the question becomes, you know, how, do, how does Beastie... Sure, Beastie gets up to the castle edge ahead of his enemy. Uh, he gets the prelates out there early. But look how quick... Look how quick these are these are out here. And I love the fact he's got the, uh, the knight patrolling up towards the north of the map. I thought we saw... Yeah, we see Beastie. He scouts those villages on gold. A lot of villages on gold here. So he knows that his enemy's going to be quickly going to the castle age. Let's make sure that we switch that over to income so you guys can see the income for these guys. Pretty even Stevens on the village account. But we are going to be heading into a castle age. A cool, calm, and collected castle age. No one no one taking out any units at this point. Regnitz Cathedral coming down for Beastie. No real surprise there. How many, how many relics is he actually going to pick up? I think that's the question, right? Because at this point... Oh, that looks like it might be a dead villager. I think almost certainly that's going to be a dead villager. Indeed it is. So how many relics does he pick up? I think... You know what? There's actually a world I can see where Beastie doesn't get any relics. It doesn't seem very likely, but it it, it is possible. All three contested relics are walled in and gated, which means very easy to pick up. Don't need to delete a wall. Don't do, need to do anything sneaky. And now we've got the high trade house. So greedy from B. B says, I'm not even going to go for the Abbey of the Trinity. I'm just going to go for high trade house. Very, very greedy here. Because remember, every second that goes by where those relics sit on the map, it's a, a second more likely that B, Beastie picks them up. And obviously that, that number is going to continue to increase. Oh, look at this, look at this. And now all of the villagers are going to be turning their attention to sieging down this wall. What a great matchup here for B. He's going to be really happy with these palisades, these fortified palisades. Beginning to work down the palisade walls, a slow and steady burn with these villagers. Uh, the right choice. He, the sooner he gets this out, the better. Now Spearman. Going to be looking. Beautiful job. No charge coming in. And now forces away these villagers. Keeps this relic locked up a little bit longer. 
And of course, Beastie's at, at the point where he's starting to train more of his own prelates. He wants to get him out onto the middle of the map, but he spots out all of the walls from his enemy. Really well done here by B. So the first relic looks almost certain to be going over to Beastie. But the value that B has received from these uh, from these walls is immense. It is huge, to say the least. Age up comes through. High trade house. What number are we thinking about? 261. Get out of town. That is a massive high trade house. That represents more than three relics right there. But keep in mind, those relics are still on the field. It's not like you've just taken three relics off the field and, you know, evaporated them or, or, or put them off... In, into some other world they still exist out there so it's imperative that we see a monastery thrown down from b at this point needs to look to try and capture up these relics as quickly as possible and now those spears going to be moving out so the first relic going to be going towards beastie he's going to be really happy with this pickup it's a slow and steady crawl towards the next one spearman moving out he's also looking to produce some knights here and how soon do we see an imperial age it's going to be tough when there's not that many relics out here on the map, but I got to say, the investment from B to go into this uh, the, these walls, I tell you what, it makes me want to play the Rus when you see this because Holy Roman Empire has been increasing in popularity on the ladder. We've seen a lot of people playing Holy Roman Empire. A lot of my coaching sessions, uh, people are, are reporting issues with the Holy Roman Empire, not sure how to deal with them, not sure how to play against them, that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's no surprise that the Rus are popular here. Beautiful micro coming out from Beastie. Keeps the scout alive. Really nice job in doing that. And now these spears going to be moving out and looking to challenge the next relic. The question's going to be when we see those warrior monks out on the field. You'd hope that it's going to be sooner rather than later. Horse archers now joining the fray as well for B. And we do indeed have a warrior monk in queue. There it is. Double monastery. And he's going for double warrior monk. Really well played by B. I, I like this a lot. This makes so much sense. The sooner he can pick these up, the better. So going for the doubles really makes sense. And now you can see he's trying to keep his opponent at bay. Trying to draw him away from these relics. There's the first of the warrior monks going to be coming in. And Beastie realizes, okay, th that that's one of my relics. I'm losing one of my relics. And he says, I can't I can't catch it. I just can't catch it. It's too fast. 1.22 tiles of movement speed. I don't think he's, he's going to try and run it down. I don't like his odds. Or he might just be moving on to the next one. Keep in mind, there is a second, uh, there is a second uh, uh, monastery out producing uh, units. And now look at this. The horse archer gets picked up. B throwing away a couple units, but you can't help but feel like he's intentionally baiting his enemy away from the relics. He wants him, he doesn't want him to pick this up. And I, this, this is why I was saying, like, I can't help but feel like B needed to drop down these monasteries a little bit faster than what he did. Slowly sieging down the walls. Horse Archer, now going to be moving back here. The units continue building here from B. He's actually up to quite a fair bit, and but more units going to be coming through. It looks like he's just going to be focusing down on this behind the scenes. Though the Warrior Monk going to be looking to pick this up. Beautiful micro from B, not even paying attention, and Beastie... Has to make a decision. Do I try and chase this down? No, what are you doing? This is, this is delivering the relic. No, B delivers the relic to Beastie. A huge mistake. He then picks it up. Says, thank you very much. Massive throw right there from B. Not expected at all. One of the world's best players throwing away a relic in the middle of the battle. But all of a sudden, Beastie, he stands still and says, well, you threw it away. So it's only appropriate for me to do the same thing. Fortunately, it looks like there's going to be no warrior monks around it at the moment. And we see up towards the north. We've got, look at this. We've got double warrior monk heading up towards this direction. I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, but he forgot to put a gate in. So we've got just kind of chilling out, minding their own business. And now he picks it up. Goes, can he go for the next wall? He could probably pick it off here. He's, he's just moving it slightly further away from his enemy. This is the right call. The further he moves it away from his enemy, the closer it is to his base, the further away it is from any prelates. Really nice work. There's the prelate on the way back in. <laughs> he manages to move it a fair way away. Jeez. Louise, this game is... I tell you what, this is one of those games. It is very exciting. And now we hear those relics being picked up in the north of the map. Where is it? It might just be this one that we heard. But what a fight over this relic. What a shit fight that didn't need to happen. Honestly, this was a this was a fight that didn't need to happen. And once again, like, th there's been so much going on. And you can't help but feel like if B loses this game, it's only because of these mistakes that he's made. He's played it immaculately up until this point. Now we see the Knights looking to come around. He's going to be looking to pick off the, re the Prelate once again. The Wallalol goes down. Is he going to challenge it? It doesn't look like it. Continuing to fall away. He wants to try and come back in. If that Wallalol does finalize, it means that no more Wallalols can happen. Knights coming up towards the north side. A raid going to be able to push that back. At the same time, we don't see the wall get deleted just yet. He can't actually delete the walls with the enemy units around here. So he's still just going to be twiddling his thumb. Relic looks like it will be making its way back. That's the second relic now for Beastie. And slowly and steadily, he makes his way towards three relics, which I would be calling the baseline 
of relic capture for the Holy Roman Empire. You want to be having three relics. If you can't get three, then you're in you're in trouble territory. We do see the mil militia making their way onto the field, and look at the militia numbers. Huge amount of militia. I think B finally realized. Oh, I can make I can get militia. I totally forgot. Can you imagine if these militia had come two minutes earlier? Oh, it would have changed everything. It would have changed the course of the game. Oh wow. This is a game I've got, I gotta say, give me a second, fellas. I gotta grab myself something to drink because this has been an absolute nail-biting game. Whew. Oh my lord. Whew, jeez, Lord. <laughs> this is the, we are gaming right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is a good one. Uh, we did see all of the, uh, all of the militia die in the middle of the map. They've only got an 80 second lifespan on them. Looks like the warrior monk did go down. Up towards the north of the map, the raid does get cleaned up. Be looking to try and stabilize. Beastie, where's that Imperial Age? Surely going to be coming through. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful uh, mine or farming economy behind this. Really, really nicely uh, positioned here. And look at the forces from Beastie. I'm loving the spearman numbers. Honestly, I feel like spears are probably one of the best units in the game at the moment. You know, I, I feel this way about a lot of units. You know, crossbows, spearmen, men at arms. There's, there's just a lot of good units. And I often call knights like the best unit in the game as well. So there you go. But look at the numbers coming out from Beastie. He's got to be... He, he is going to be overwhelming B right now. B going to have to fall back. Spears just way too many. Does have the option for a Walla lol. Could look to try and convert just to hold on a bit longer. Lench Connect going to be thrown in the mix here. He's trying his best to kite away the enemy units. But remember, these are Holy Roman Empire military units. They run a lot faster than your standard infantry. And still makes his way. He's just kiting around in circles at this point. How do you even hold against this? I think you need an archer mass. And not a, not a cavalry archer mass. An archer archer mass. But he's still just going for mass archers. There we go. Finally seeing the archers coming out. Definitely going to make some correct choices there. Do we see more archery rangers thrown down? I think I'd like to see that. Knight's getting behind the walls as well. And B doing a great job just to loop back around towards his own base. And now look at this. We've got Beastie just going for a giant palisade wall. Lots of villagers looking to take part in this. Actually, no. These guys are going out to berries. And now, it's 261. I, I think, B, is B on maximum? Something tells me B is on the maximum bounty. 261 feels like a lot of bounty. I don't know whether he took out the boars, but I don't see... Uh, there's one down here. That's the only one that I can see on the map. Other one... I might be blind. That's the only one I can see. I, it normally spawns towards the middle, right? So he's probably taken it out with a knight or two. Somewhere around there. Maybe maybe up, up here? Maybe, it's, maybe it was up here. Sacred Sight was getting captured. No longer getting captured. Spears and Lance Connects. Eight and seven villagers up here. This is this could be a big victory for Beastie. He's already up eight vills in this position. He's had a couple relics denied off him. I say a couple, but there's actually three relics denied off him. And those villagers about to go down. Oh my lord. It is a massacre. An absolute massacre. A couple torches being thrown at them as well. But it's only a matter of time until those cavalry units get in on top. Yeah, he just sends a couple, couple knights after him. That's all he needs to. Outpost thrown down. Looking to try and get some line of sight out here bc now looking to capture sacred sites number one's been taken number two in the center of the map also gets taken number three on the enemy side what an action-packed game one of the best games that i've so far seen this season it is it look it took a while to get going but once it got going it was absolutely amazing it lived up to the hype i mean these these two guys i i think look i, I don't want to put words in people's mouths here but ob obviously and I'm not saying there's bad blood between these two guys, but it, there, there is definitely a history that we've got here. We can say that much, all right? That, I think I'll just leave it at that. There is history between these two folks, and it, it's great having them get into the ring together and and, uh, and sorting this out between each other. But we've got ourselves a counterattack coming in on the south side. Beastie looking to try and punish his enemies. Up about 14 villagers. I take that back, 17 villagers. It's going to continue to increase as the villagers go down. He's taken 15 workers out this entire game. And now back towards the north side. Beastie continuing to push it down. Militia going to be called to the front. And now the spears going to be looking to brace as all those knights begin to surround, but the numbers are looking good. Swabia goes down for Beastie. 14 villagers working their way towards that Imperial. And Beastie almost looking to sacrifice these units. Sure, the spearmen looked healthy, but now all the archers on the backside are going to be able to clean this up. And we've got ourselves a problem. We've got Beastie has got a problem. He cancels the Swabia. He says, I can't do a Swabia right now. I will lose the game. And I think you're right, Beastie. I think you're 100% on the money. It might actually be better for you to be thinking about an Ellsbach here. You're already on 99 villagers. What else is the Swabia going to do for you? Ellsbach, you put it in the middle of the map and that's exactly where he goes for it. It's beautiful, baby. We have got ourselves a game right now. And you've got a problem because we've got B 
who's in Castle Age, and he is very happy with his position. Sure, he's lost a few villagers, but he's got a great military amount. Like, look at the difference in army value between these. B on 9.3k compared to Beastie, who's on 4.4. More than double his army value right now. So Beastie, he's not having a good time. Let's just say that much. I mean, he's, he's still having a good time, isn't he? He's, ha he's having a good... He's having a great time. Uh, I think he feels very comfortable here. The main issue that you've got to remember is there's no stone walls. There's no keeps. The only keeps that you can make are the ones from landmarks. That's it. You're not going to be able to use your stone for anything else. You can you can go in placements on your outposts, but even your outposts, they're going to cost... They're going to cost double what you normally pay for them. If we take a look right now, that's that's what this mod does. Uh, it increase. Look at that. Look at that. Springwood emplacement, two hundred and fifty stone uh, for a springwood emplacement. I think uh, Holy Roman Empire is going to be a little bit cheaper. Uh, yeah, one eighty seven, but four hundred and fifty stone for a cannon emplacement. I got to say, I love that change. What a great change. Really, really nicely picked up by the EGC TV guys. Uh, the, mi the the minds behind that definitely know know what the game needs. These these, these games are non stop action, and I'm loving it because you know at most in most games. Games at this point, you would expect to see a stone wall drawn from this corner here all the way to this point in the middle of the map. And then another stone wall from here all the way across to the middle of the map. I'm not kidding you. You would 100% expect that. And look at this. Beastie brings out the relic to the middle of the map, the L's back. He looks to just hold it down out here. The relic is going to empower this L's back. It's going to mean it's got greater line of sight. It's got greater weapon range. It's got greater weapon damage, greater attack speed. It buffs up all of those important stats. Also gives it a little bit of armor, I think, as well. We can actually see what it does. Armor increase, damage increase, sight range increase, weapon range increase. So no attack speed increase, but you get the extra damage in the weapon range, which is very nice for your cannon, which gets 12 tiles of range. And uh, you're able to hold down this, this central location pretty effectively. Beastie looking like he's going to be moving into Elite Horseman, Elite Spearman. A great combination in the late game. Actually going to be going Elite Men at Arms here as well. But now we've got our push coming out. Sacred Sight is being stood on. More raids happening behind the scene. Just Beastie non-stop going into the enemy base. But now the attention going to be turned towards the elves back in the center of the map. You got to ask the question why. Why is he looking to siege this down? You're going up against a landmark that has that takes 33% less damage. It's got 7,500 health. It's got a relic inside. It's got a cannon emplacement. Don't dare mess with the elves back. I can tell you that right now. You, you <laughs> I'm trying to think of a word that starts with E. You know, you don't... Don't... <laughs> Don't E the L's back. You know, that, that's... that's. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. I'm sure there'll be the top... The most upvoted comment on in the comments will uh, will be that, I'm sure. Don't... Don't aggress on the L's back. I don't know. I don't know. You guys get the point, though. You, you don't want to mess with the L's back. So Palisade Wall is going to be coming up. Now, a, a lot of people would be saying, but Drongo, you know, 3DB is playing the Rus. He doesn't have access to stone walls. Wrong. False. That's Dwight Schrute coming in right there. False. He could make the Spaskaya Tower, which is also a keep. We got archers and knights up against horsemen spears. Which one's going to be victorious? Well, one of them's elite. The other one is not elite. Horse archer's going to be coming in on the backside, though. These guys are going to do very effectively here. Look at the armor for the horsemen. Up to seven uh, ranged armor there. Accidentally puts everything... I say accidentally. He puts everything in the same control group. Or control... The same drag box group. And they all kind of bug out with their movement speed. Crossbow's also going to be joining the fray here. Up against no uh, heavy units, though. So kind of useless. And look at this elves back in the center. Just picking up all the reinforcements. No cannonballs. Imagine getting knocked out by a cannonball and never getting up again. That's that kind of sucks, right? It sucks if you're. Uh, it, it it sucks. It sucks for you. It probably sucks for your family as well. All right, more stone more more stone walls. More palisades coming up. Obviously, they can't make stone walls. Actually, does it even come up on the UI? Yeah, you can't. Even, they're not even on the UI. Look at that. Non-existent. No keeps. No stone walls. No stone wall towers. No stone wall gates. That's a key one. No gates. You'd hate to see people just dropping gates around random places. Beats, beastie under pressure. Uh, it looks like B might be thinking about going uh, Imperial. And if, if he is, that is 100% the play. Uh, I'd love to see from B also is just some trade. For him to put down some trade, he's got a really safe trading option for himself. Uh, and he's got great pressure here. Ideally, he wants to get to Imp and get out a big siege mass. The problem is he's going to be going up culverins of the Holy Roman Empire. And culverins very very strong the, the one difference is though that he does have that extra 0.5 range over the culverins it's 12.5 range against 12 range so there is a little bit of a, an advantage in that regard but other than that not a huge amount uh, that he's got going his way uh, but it, obviously cheaper uh culverin or cheaper sprinkles as well uh, once he does hit imperial let's take a look at the farming economy though farming economy of b is looking pretty pretty damn good how many farms is he sitting on at the moment 48 farms yeah 48 farms compare that to beastie uh, who is sitting on 45 farms. So yeah, pretty even Stevens at this point in the game. 
Elite Lance connects. All the Elite upgrades have come through for Beastie. He's sitting on 4.6k gold. Where is he getting this gold from? He's just mining out in the middle of the map right now. He's got the tier 2 upgrade. And uh, yeah, he's having he's having the time of his life. He's up 26 vils, but he's also got those relics. Now, I guess the other thing to note is we've got, you know, things like the high trade houses, which are going to be producing gold as well. But now all of a sudden, it looks like B might be on the defensive. Look at the horseman numbers coming out from Beastie here. He doesn't have enough knights to, to compensate for it. And we head into the cinematic mode as it is time for us to witness a battle of the ages as Beastie looks to try and take out B in this first game of the series. He's trying his best to get onto the horse archers. We can see the horsemen trying to make their way through. Eventually they do get around and now going to be able to turn their attention towards the knights. Remember, these are elite horse arch or elite horsemen up against the castle age knights and just getting eaten alive by the men at arms together with the lance connect on the front side and now the horsemen going to be coming through and this is where it starts to get tough for b he's not going to be able to throw down a keep because he's in a bit of a he's, he's not in a good spot right now needs to make sure he's got reinforcements on the way maybe a little crossbow or two could definitely go a long way here and we ride on board with him as it is going to be the high armory that's coming through for him we'll take a look and see whether we can spot that landmark going down I got no idea where it is. Is it in the back of the base? It's in the in the back of the base. Only seven villagers tapping away at it. And now more militia getting called. How many militia do we see out here at the moment? Eight militia at the moment. More units looking to attack down on the palisade walls on the south side. Beastie just really doing a great job of multitasking at the same time. Look at this up towards the north. He's attacking all of the gates. There's not going to be option for gate heals to come in. Looks like he is going to be able to hold on the main front. B does. But behind this, Beastie is just in a world of upgrades. He is loving life. And now we see on this south side that slowly and steadily this palisade wall is being broken down up towards the north. The fortified palisade gate is going to go down as well. And once it does, it's going to leave these villagers with nothing left to do but for run to run for their dear lives. Outpost emplacement, cannon emplacement, or outpost with cannon emplacement coming through. Fortification as well. Beastie looking to take control of this game. And B is just, he's struggling. He's lacking gold at the moment. Really needs to get in that gold. He's got his tier one upgrade at the moment. And now look at this, more men at arms on the south. There's so many men at arms, so many little raids coming in. BC just doing a great job. Villagers going to be moving forward, looking to drop down outposts. And we see the first of the bombards rolling off the blocks. Gets the wall in. He says, you, I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. Looks to try and clean up these little raids that are happening. Villagers going to go down up towards the north. BC up to 140 bills. When we look at the economies, 5k, 6.2k, 6.3k for Beastie. Compare that to his opponent who's sitting on 3.6k, 4. Point, about 4.2k. So about 2,000 resources difference between these guys a minute. That is a huge difference. So Beastie up an absolute mile and a half. Down towards the south side, more raids coming in. And Beastie is all over B right now. Things not looking good in this game one for B. Back towards the middle of the map and more men at arms breaking, making their way through. It is just relentless, the amount of units that Beastie has got right now. They are non-stop. And now look at the outposts that are coming up. He's using them to fortify the position. He can't use keeps. Obviously, keeps not available to him. Where are the elite upgrades? Let's take a look and see. Knights, no elite upgrades. Archers, no elite upgrades. Horse archers, are there anything that's got an elite upgrade right now? I don't think so. And Beastie looks to put on the pressure even more. Still sitting at 261 bounty on this. I think almost certainly we're at max bounty here. Streltsy going to be coming out. Are they going to be enough to save the day? He's got eight more in queue. That could indeed be what he's going to save the day here. We don't see any indication that he's gone into the university just yet. We can have a look for it, but I tell you what, I think we just better be off. Better off focusing on the front line. Bombards. Almost in a little bit of a vulnerable position. Bills jump into the outposts. He's mining the gold on the front. He is intentionally mining this gold just so you can't have it right now, B. And slowly w working his way through these walls. Archer's getting some nice little shots in over, over the top. Still veteran status. Not even plus two in just yet. More units coming out. Streltsy, they kind of look a little bit like militia. They, I think they carry the same weapon there. I tell you what, I love Streltsy. Such a great unit. Such a fun unit to use. And now breaking through once again, the multitasking from Beastie is just looking incredible. He loves these late game styles. You know, he doesn't have to win playing the late game, but when he does play the late game, he almost always wins. This guy is unstoppable in these positions. Look at the look at the, the number of different areas that he's attacking right now. We've got outposts on the south side, up towards the north. Vils gathering up here. He's got full line of sight of the entire map. Just random Vils out here, just chilling out. He's up to 147 villagers. Uh, Beastie, we may have a problem, sir. Your bombards are, uh, well, they're lacking protection. I didn't want to say anything else uh, because uh, I, I like having videos not demonetized. But uh, 
we do, we do see the night numbers starting to look a little bit concerning here. I think Boyar's Fortitude has come through. Indeed, it has. Uh, we don't see any biology just yet. There's chemistry coming through for Beastie. So he could be looking to go into hand cannoneers himself. Uh, as an option, we'll take a look. Yeah, it doesn't look like it at the moment. So maybe just looking for Culverin upgrades. Yeah, Culverin and Bombard upgrades. I think also the cannon emplacement gets an upgrade on that one as well. But you can see the power of the cannon emplacement here. Despite the fact that Beastie isn't able to build keeps, he says, well, that's fine. I'm just going to build... I'm just going to build outposts and put cannon emplacements on them. And he gets the, the fortification on the outposts as well. He's absolutely fine with it. And look at this. Look at the vills. Look at how cheeky he is. He's on, on the gold right now of B. And I think he's just throwing away these vills, right? He doesn't really care if he if he loses these vills. He's absolutely fine with it. Court Architect's going to be coming through. Buffing up the amount of health that uh, his, his buildings have got, including our outposts on the front line. They're already on 1050 health. Now they go up to 2450. Throw in the extra from the Court Architects in 30 seconds, and you're going to be looking at 3k plus. How much does that give, actually? 30%. Yeah, so 3k plus. A huge amount. But all of it... What's interesting to me is that there's been a lack of mangonels this game. No, no one's really gone into mangonels. And I guess that, that does kind of make sense because you haven't seen a whole bunch of archers yet from either of these players. Like, it, it's not been very archer-centric. It's all around spears. It's all around horsemen. The tempo has definitely been with Beastie. But now we take a look at these outposts. They go up to a total of 3,185 health. So they said you couldn't make keeps. And, uh, well, you forgot about this guy, didn't you? And PC just overwhelming his enemy. This looks almost certainly a good game at this point. B going to be holding on for dear life, but... I mean, Beastie's just played it immaculately. Still sitting on 192 pop. Ru the Rus player, B, he's down to 125. He calls out the militia, trying to hold on for dear life, but it's just not going to work. I think he was probably a little bit late. I mean, does it all go down to that relic? I feel like it might all come down to that relic. It was a beautiful little engagement, but he just... It was like a miss macro or some, or miss micro with that, that one single relic. You know, the one that was over here. Instead of taking it back to his base, he brought it out and around and then just let it die right there. So I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it ends up with, with BC overwhelming his enemy. And I think from this position, B is going to have such a hard time coming back. He's down 50 vils. And I mean, at, the, at this point, obviously you, you kind of prefer to be the Rus in the late game in this matchup. But with the advantage that Beastie's been able to build throughout this game, it definitely seems like it's his game to take. And good game gets called. Fellas, go and check out EGC TV. An absolutely amazing game coming out from these two top-level players. Go say good day to him. 15 GMT, 10 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Australian time every Saturday and Sunday. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.